In our last video, we were exploring a simple but important topic that related to being able to select a workbook using VBA. So now that we can select workbooks, we're going to move on to the next part, which means being able to select worksheets within our workbook. So this video is going to focus on all the different ways that we can select worksheets within a workbook in Excel. Now I already have a workbook created. It's called Selecting Worksheets. And in this workbook, I have three worksheets. One is called Sarah, the next is called Bob, and the third and final worksheet is called Tim. So I'm gonna write some basic scripts that will select these different worksheets. Now to do that, I'm gonna go in my BBA editor. If you haven't already, make sure to include a, a module to house your code. And then we can start writing our subroutines. So I'm going to call the first one selecting worksheets and this will be method one. Now in the last video I explained that we can write this code in a long-handed way and in a short-handed way. So for the first example I'm going to show both ways. I'm going to show the long-handed way where we qualify every object and the short-handed way where we kind of negate certain objects. Now that I'm in, in my subroutine, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a message box. And this message box is going to display information that's returned to me in the Excel application. Well, my goal is to get the name of this worksheet called Sarah. So return a Sarah to a message box. Well, I'm going to, I know that worksheet lives within my Excel application, so I'm going to type Excel application. And I know that the worksheet that I'm working with, well, that just exists in my active workbook. And then every workbook in my Excel application has a collection called worksheets. Now we know a collection is just a group of similar objects. Well, in this case, the worksheets collection contains all the worksheet objects in a particular workbook. And if I want to select just one of those worksheets, I can pass through something called a key. So a key is a unique name that belongs to each of our worksheets. So in this case, the name would be Bob for this sheet. It would be Sarah for this sheet. And it would be Tim for that sheet. So if I want to select Sarah, I put some quotation marks and I put Sarah. So by writing this, I've now selected the worksheet called Sarah. Well, every worksheet has something called a name property, and that basically just returns the name of the worksheet that I'm working with. So this is selecting a worksheet using the key method. So if I run it, let's see what we get. Perfect. So I got my message box, and it returned the sheet that I selected, that sheet being Sarah. Well, technically, I can make this code a little bit more shorthanded. Well, if I remove application, Excel will assume that we mean the Excel application, so I don't technically have to write it. And if I remove active workbook, Excel will assume that I mean the active workbook that I'm in. So if I run this line of code now, we should still get the same result. And it looks like we do. So it returns Sarah. Now this is all okay as long as I want to work out of the active workbook. So the minute that I say, hey, the active workbook is no longer the workbook I want to work from, then I would have to specify it here. So I'd have to put something like workbooks, you know, uh, book onexlsx So then I would have to specify it. But in this example, I'm working out of my active workbook, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to copy this subroutine, paste it below, delete that line. And in the last video, we know that if we're working with a collection, we have kind of two ways to select an item from a collection. The first method is being the key method, and the second method is being the index method. So the index method is basically just passing through a numerical value, but it's a string, or 
a name in this situation. But how do we determine which number to pass through? Well, if I go back to my workbook, the index is determined by the order in which the worksheets appear in your workbook. So, Sarah is the first workbook, sorry, the first worksheet that I see in my workbook. So it has an index of one. Bob is the second one I see, so it has an index of two. Tim is the third one, so it has an index of three. So if I pass through a three, for example, oh, got to change my method name. I should get back Tim. Looks like it returned Tim. If I pass through one, I get Sarah. If I pass through two, I get Bob. And if I pass through four, I should get an error. Looks like I do, so it's working. I have to make sure that the number of worksheets that I have in my workbook is actually existing. So in this case, I don't have four worksheets, so it's returning an error. So that's using the index method. Well, technically, we don't actually have to use something called the worksheets collection. We can actually use something called a sheets collection. So a sheets collection is very similar to a worksheets collection. They both live in a workbook, but the worksheets collection only contains worksheet objects. The sheets collection contains both worksheet objects and chart sheet objects. And because it's a collection, it has also a key and an index method. Well, in this example, I want to pass through a key. So if I pass through Sarah, let's see what we get back. Oh, forgot the name again. Silly me. Perfect. So it returns Sarah. Let me change that right away. I also have an index method I can leverage. So if I pass through two, I should get back Bob. Looks like I get back Bob, so that works. Our next method is a special method. So what if we want to refer to the worksheet that we see when we go into a particular workbook? Well, that, that particular sheet is called our active sheet, so it's the the sheet that we see when we go into our workbook. It's the active one. It's the one that we have kind of basically selected down at our tab. So if I want to refer to that sheet, I just need to drop that and pass through active sheet. And I call this the active sheet method. So right now, Tim is selected. So Let's see if it returns Tim in a message box. It returned Tim, so it worked perfectly. Our last method is not a common one, but it's an important one because it's what we consider the most stable. What do we mean by stable? Well, let's go back up here for a second, right here. Well, this example depends on the worksheet name staying the same, just like method three. They're both using the key method, so they both depend on the, the, the worksheet name not changing. If I was to change that sheet to Sarah 2, this one would not work, and this one would not work. So it depends on the name staying consistent. This example and this example depend on our worksheets being in a particular order. So it depends that this order of my worksheet stays the same even if I send the workbook to somebody else. So if the order changes, then I could all of a sudden start, be, start working with a worksheet that I wasn't intending to work with. So it's unstable in that regard because the order can, can make it where we're all of a sudden working with a worksheet that we didn't want to. This one depends on the, the worksheet being the active worksheet, so being the sheet that we see when we go in our workbook. If our sheet is no longer the active one, then all of a sudden this one could create a problem because we could be working again with a different worksheet that we weren't intending. 
This last method, we use something called a code name. So I use call this one the code name method. The code name method is probably the most stable method. Well, what is it a code name? Well, we can only see the code names from our VBA editor, but if I go over here to this left pane and I look at my selecting worksheets uh, workbook, I see I have some Microsoft Excel objects in it. And there's individual sheets. So the ones that are in my workbook, Sarah, Bob, and Tim, are also in my VBA editor. Now, each one of these has a name, but they also have something called a code name. So this thing right here. Sheet 1. Sheet 1 is the code name that belongs to the worksheet called Bob. Sheet 2 is the code name that belongs to the Sarah worksheet. And Sheet 3 is the code name that belongs to the Tim worksheet. So the nice thing about our, our code names is they don't change. So even if I change this, this worksheet to Bob 2, my code name will stay the same. Even if I rearrange the order of my worksheets, this code name will stay the same. So I'm expecting this line of code to return Bob, which it did. Now let me go rearrange the order and run it again. I still get Bob. Let me change the name of it. Change it to Bob2. I'm still working with that particular worksheet. Now it's still returning a different name, but it's still Bob. It's just now the name is Bob too. So it's still working with the right worksheet. So we consider this to be our most stable method. So that was the last example. So that concludes this video. If you have any questions, you know, make sure to put them down below and then I'll try to get back to you and uh, you know, hopefully walk you through any errors that you might be experiencing. But uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks again.